we're pleased with our performance in the second quarter. Uh, financially, we uh, had earnings per share grow at uh, 24 percent, and um, uh, sales declined by 2 percent. But that's in line with what we'd expected. We saw a reversal of customer buying patterns in, uh, from the first quarter of about $250 million. And new prescriptions were impacted in the second quarter, as anticipated, by about another $250 million. Um, I think if we put that together for the first half of the year, we saw sales growth in constant currency of 7 percent, which we think is more representative of what we'll see in the second half. And we were able to uh, confirm our sales guidance uh, that we'd, we'd actually given back in December of last year and raise EPS, given the EPS beat that we had in the second quarter. Yeah, I mean, it, we'll get to, Josh, uh, some of those slight revenue misses on, on existing drugs uh, and, and perhaps the reasons behind that. But uh, w wanted to start, if we can, on on an update on on those therapeutics you're working on for, for COVID. Just, to, just remind us exactly what you're working on there. It's therapeutics as opposed to vaccines. And what stage are we at? Yes, we've, we've actually got three different approaches for COVID. But I think most importantly is our antibody approach. We've got two antibodies in clinical development, and they're really looking at... Um, opportunities to uh, help reduce the, the burden of the disease if you've been hospitalized, uh, to try to prevent the disease from having a significant effect if you've been uh, newly diagnosed. And then maybe most excitingly is to act as at least temporarily a prophylactic agent for uh, patients who may be at high risk of contracting the disease, so patients in nursing homes or frontline workers. Um, we're pursuing uh, 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 clinical development around all three of those and look to uh, start registrational studies in the next few weeks around those areas. And, and am I right in saying you're partnered with quite a few rival companies sharing information uh, in this regard? Is that something you expect as a one-off just because of COVID? Or is there a kind of changing sentiment uh, within the industry for, that could apply to all, all other areas uh, and drugs uh, over the long term? Well, I think you see uh, the industry is, is focused uh, intensely on bringing therapies that can help for COVID. And in this case, one of the things that, that's going to be a constraint on the antibody side would be manufacturing capacity. So we are working across the industry to try to um, provide as much capacity as possible. Certainly from a Lilly perspective, we're reconfiguring our plants around the world in the uh, uh, hope that we'll have positive data on the antibodies and be able to bring uh, our goal is to be able to bring uh, somewhere in the range of 100,000 doses to patients even this year if we have um, uh, positive data. Of course, we're doing this all. We're investing all on our own to try to make this happen. But I think a, a collaboration from a capacity perspective will be important. So, Josh, talk us through the slight revenue miss. Uh, I mean, it didn't look like it was any one drug in particular. It looked like it was spread across uh, most of, uh, mo most of the, the, the individual lines. I mean, is there a slight risk that people are taking their focus off the, the, the typical uh, drugs and, and diseases they focus, focus on normally because of this pressure on COVID? We, we did see in the second quarter that uh, around the world, but certainly in the U.S., that uh, patients weren't going to the doctor. Um, and as a function of not going to the doctor, you know, for us, anywhere between 5 and 10 percent of our uh, business on a, on a monthly basis are new prescriptions. So if patients aren't going to the doctors, they're not getting di diagnosed or they're not getting new treatments. Uh, the thing that I mentioned that we're encour encouraged about, though, is that really happened early in the second quarter. The pronounced effect was in, um, was in April and May. We're starting to see uh, patients go back to the doctor in June and July. We're back uh, across, di it's different across different specialties, but we're really back to about somewhere between 80 and 90 percent of pre- uh, COVID utilization of healthcare services. So we're, we're confident in the second half of the year we're going to see a, a return to more normal rates of business. Uh, of course, uh, COVID challenges are still there, but I think patients are prioritizing getting to the doctors. And for the diseases that we treat, diabetes and oncology and immunology, um, uh, patients need to be treated. And I think people are, are actually, I think, m even more focused on ensuring that they're staying healthy and adhering to their treatment regimen. So we're, we're not that concerned for the second half of the year. But certainly in, in, the, in the second quarter, we saw an acute impact.